Well, the Dayton Air Show is just 18 days away. The event, of course, takes place July 30th and 31st. And joining us now is Sheila Wallace with the Dayton Air Show. Sheila, we're so glad to have you Thank with you us again. Thank you for being having me this time. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, the Dayton Air Show is, of course, an exciting event that we look forward to every year. And this year's event is no exception, especially since there are some new acts to the lineup. Can you tell us about those and what we can see this year? Well, first of all, one act that's a repeat act, but they're flying a new aircraft, is the U.S. Navy Blue Angels. And this year they are flying the F-A-18 Hornet, so that is a new one for them. And uh, also we have um, a gentleman who was here years ago, uh, last name is Coleman, Kevin Coleman, who is a uh, single, single, I'm just butchering that one all to pieces, let's try <laughs> it again. He is flying a single engine aerobatic aircraft. Oh, exciting. Very, very good man. I know there are some changes to parking and traffic patterns. That's always something everybody wants to think ahead about. What do they need to know? It gives you some really basic, easy things to think about. For people who are going in as general admission, all the parking is on the east side of Dixie Drive. And then also to the, well, you will have easy access to be able to actually cross Dixie. There will be more buses on our airport grounds to be able to move people from point A to point B. And then for people who have specialty tickets like the pavilion, the chalets, and also people who are volunteering, if they take that hang tag that we give them for parking, just flip it over and look on the back. There's a map. It'll be right there to make their life very simple. All right, but for general admission, the thing to remember is east side. East side see. and just follow the signs. There's going to be a lot of signage and a lot of volunteers helping to direct. Okay, and those buses will be running pretty frequently, I'm sure. They certainly will. Okay, and then we were talking just a couple of minutes ago. If you have kids, we're going to be bringing my daughter Lydia. She's three uh, for the very first time this year. I'm really excited about it. You said there's something we don't want to miss for her. You absolutely don't. She'll have a wonderful time. It's called the Kids Hanger. And in the kids' hangar, they're going to find a huge sandbox that they can play in. There will be face painting, all kinds of activities and that a lot of them are aviation related for the very young kids. It's a wonderful place to be. All right. And what's important for people to remember to bring with them? I'm sure sunscreen. That's a big one. Ear protection. Is that something you should I'm, consider? I'm going to suggest that folks think about before they come putting on light colored clothing, putting on sunscreen. Um, hat for a lot of folks is more comfortable. Um, definitely sunscreen, reapplying it throughout the course of the day, using um, hot, cold water, you know, away, put a towel around your neck sometimes helps people that are starting to overheat. Uh, consuming fluids, but that means the non alcoholic variety like <laughs> the water and the Gatorade. But if you should start to feel overheated or have any health challenges, we have a team of doctors and medics that are right there on the field that will help you with any issue you might have. All right, and as far as beverages go, you can bring in water with you or you purchase on site? Purchase on site. Okay, all right. Well, we will have this interview on WDTN.com in case you wanna kind of rehash things as you pack up and get ready to go to that later on this month. We are very excited and again, thank you so much for being with us today. It's my pleasure, thank you.